Well, good good afternoon, everybody. Thank you so much. I know always these uh, fr Friday talks often fall into that wonderful crack of, well, this is the one time we can usually find where people aren't engaged in something else and when they're most exhausted and can't make it to that last thing during the week. So we always appreciate anyone who comes out, and we're very, very pleased to welcome you yet again. My name is Tom Garza. I'm the director of the Texas Language Center, the TLC. Uh, there's some little brochures if you haven't got one about our, 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 our mission, what we're trying to do here. We're delighted to welcome you. This is our third uh, afternoon monthly uh, brown bag workshop that we've done. I want to just give you three quick little announcements of things that are upcoming that are on our website and just to remind you and all. Our first major presentational workshop is coming up next month. This will be on a Saturday so that no one has the excuse that you're in class. But it's a full day workshop Saturday, April 24th called Revisiting Proficiency. 21st century views on language learning. We have a wonderful lineup a four specialists from the Foreign Service Institute in Washington, D.C., Department of State, coming in to talk to us about uh, that the, the proficiency movement and the proficiency training testing is now what we remember from the 1980s. This is something brand new and something we can use in our current classes. So uh, Jim Bernhardt from the Asian and African Languages section and three other speakers, some from Asian, some from East European, and some from European languages will be joining us to do a morning uh, symposium with lecture and then an afternoon hands-on workshop of how to do proficiency, uh, even proficiency assessment in your own class. It's kind of down and dirty. I also remind everyone of the TLC blog site, which is part of our website, uh, where these talks will be uploaded after uh, they've been presented today, so that there will be a video record of today's uh, presentation. And we encourage you to join in on a conversation on the blog site about what topics we raise here. So we talked the last time with Orlando Kelm about using, uh, actually using blogs in the foreign language classroom, is we want you to come back with your responses of questions to him, comments on what the presentation said, argue, arguments with each other and so forth in this very nice polite setting that we have called our blog site. And finally, to remind you, the day before our workshop, remember our workshop Saturday, April 24th, that uh, Friday, April 23rd, will be our April brown bag as well, uh, a topic to be determined, and we'll be sure to send out announcements on the website to let everyone know. Okay, that's it for all the quick announcements. I want to get right to the main event today because I don't want to waste any more time here and get to our two presenters and today's topic. Uh, we're looking at the idea of foreign language as being an essential, integrated part of our curriculum, no longer the uh, relegated to the idea of, well, I have enough language now, maybe I can go abroad, but rather I need to go abroad in order to get the language competency that I'm looking for. So I'm delighted to have two uh, in instructors of language from our Department of French and Italian, both of whom not only have extensive experience in teaching these languages, French and Italian, but also have extensive experience in organizing, running, coordinating, administering major summer study abroad programs. So, in with a quick, a quick order here, I'd like to introduce Karen Kelton uh, from the Department of French and Italian, who was a lecturer there, uh, with uh, coming in with a degree in Lit Library Information Science. Karen has won numerous awards, including a 2009 last year Calico Award in language education, uh, access to language education from the Calico, the Computer Assisted Language Instruction Consortium, as well as winning prizes from Liberal Arts Technology Project Quest. Uh, she's been a, a senior lecturer in the Department of French and Italian now for a number of years where she has served as coordinator of second year, uh, second semester French as well as lower division French. She also, as I said, coordinates a major study abroad program, the UT summer program in Lyon. Uh, sitting next to her, to her left, is a distinguished senior lecturer, and I'm going to get this right, Antonella de Fattore Olson. <laughs> so much, that's, and that's the extent of my Italian, but I mean, who comes to us via Rome through the Department of uh, French and Italian as well. Um, she comes with degrees both in comparative literature and that brings this experience in language, literature, and culture to the teaching of Italian language, methodology, as well as play production. She does a wonderful play in Italian every, every spring, spring. And every other year. Every, yeah. every other year, which is brilliant. We've, Elizabeth and I have had the pleasure of seeing these, and they're just amazing. And therefore, uh, incorporates this love of the theater and comparative literature into her courses on modern Italian 
literature. So I want to keep them short because I want to focus on the talk instead. With, uh, any, without any further ado, uh, Karen Kelton, Antonella Olson, this is That's your fault. Well, we're trying to get um, our Wi-Fi. Ah, yes. Okay. Blue cord is not working. Well, Kyle works on that. Maybe we can start. We, um, we have this beautiful orange handout, and it has all the links that we hope we'll be able to show you. <laughs> um, these um, two, we're, we're going to start with, as you can see, maybe we can go kind of show you what we're going to be doing. We're going to describe our uh, two programs. These are the two faculty led study abroad programs in the Department of French and Italian. So uh, the the French one goes to Lyon, and the uh, Italian one goes to Rome. These are always the first summer sessions in uh, every every year, and they've been in existence since 1996. So between the two of them, we we calculated that that over a thousand students have gone with us. Uh, Antonella started in 1996 as the director. I joined um, the French program. We have more of a committee, and um, I first went on the program in 2001 as associate director, and then in 2002 as director. And um, because it's a lot of work, mm -hmm. I've been a director ever since. <laughs> <laughs> and but, but we always have multiple uh, faculty members go on this. So we, on the Lyon program, we always have two faculty members and a graduate student go. So when all of these things, it's, a, it's a, a really a team effort, and Antonella has, there, there are two faculty members who go on that, that program too. So, good, we have Ethernet, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you Kyle. Okay, but so. in fact, I wanted just to say buongiorno prima di tutto, since uh, the Italian and French, we start some lessons right away, <laughs> and if that doesn't work, we're going to start mime all yes. the things that we were going to show you. Uh, well, today, well, basically, I think we are going to do, we are going to go reverse from the title. We are going to start from there instead of from here. So we would like to take you, hopefully, there to the video clips uh, that we want to show you. Those are all the clips, I think, for both of us. I think they are like 2001, but still, even if we have others afterward, this is still, to us, it's the best. So we want to show you what we, it means, you know, the most to us. So uh, through these clips, we want to show you what you have in your handout, uh, the student and class, and the, the families and the excursions, okay? So let's see okay, if we, let me, maybe, yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm getting to the, our, our sites, uh, these, these are all bookmarked, but they disappeared. So please, I'm so, so sorry. That well, I can tell you a little bit about the school, for yeah, example. I'm going to start with Rome, okay? Yes, I'll start yes, a little bit with Rome. So I'll, I'll catch up with you. In Rome, here it's a little bit different from uh, the Lyon program. Uh, Academy is playing better what, uh, how, where they, they, they have classes. In, in Rome, uh, yeah, I'm from Rome, so in Rome, you know, it's, it's a huge city, it's, it's, it's really big. And you really, I think it's very important because the family live everywhere in the city, that the school be downtown, you know, centrally located because it needs to be easily reached by buses, metro, and so far. So um, there was a lot of work at first when I decided to, to propose this program to the Italian faculty. And uh, it was, I mean, my desire was to put them in something special, quite unique, and I did. The first year, the place was called Fontanone. Uh, we had to leave it because, they, I don't know if you know Bulgari, the Jewel Bulgari, he fell in love like I did. But of course, he was he had much more means than I did. <laughs> so he, he stole the place from me. Well, it was a quite impressive site. Basically, we were having class inside of a fountain, and the fountain will overlook Rome. It's one of the most things. It's behind the the, Ameri the, the American Academy in Algian Nicolo. It's just a fact. But anyway, after two years, obviously, we would have either be paying an absurd amount of money for the rent. Or we, and we left, of course. But this other place that we have been staying there since 1999, it's also a gorgeous place. It's a Baroque Palace downtown Rome. Uh, and it's just incredible. I mean, oh, we can see it. Oh, okay, yeah, you have it. Should I turn the lights up completely to make it a little more visible? Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah okay. I think it's a little bit fuzzy. <laughs> so I guess in this one, in this, uh, in yeah. this clip here, you're going to see probably a little bit. 
Maybe you're gonna see Maybe you're gonna see. <laughs> you're gonna see me and uh, and Daniela yeah. teaching a little bit of a class, and then I'll tell you which class are they. Mm -hmm. The second group, group belongs to the upper division classes. So normally it's larger the population, of course, of the, of the lower division. Because we really insist you know, that it's so important to be there to make the little uh, jump, you know, be the transition necessary between be, uh, knowing the grammar but be able to, to actually speak. So it's very important that we insist with them. But of course, we want to accommodate our majors and minors Therefore, we definitely are more than willing to offer, even if it's for free, this third class, which is Italian 365. It's a conference course in, in, uh, in Italian. Okay? What we do, I'll put a little bit of theater there, just to please everyone, especially myself, but also the family, because at the end of the program, we present a play to the family. The families are our audience and it's kind of, you know, it's a little bit intimidating, they're really Italian and they're not professors, so they, they so that, that what you saw here. Just two clips of, of the one class, I think I was teaching the 312K, and then the 365, and that clip was Daniela Pini, but usually now it's been Douglas Pio, um, and we team, team teach that class, okay? So the other one, um, that we, all the students can enroll into is the, the one taught in English. It's called ITC, Italian Civilization 349, and that specifically class is being designed for the Rome program. So, in fact, the name is Rome, Eternal City, Myths and Realities, and uh, Douglas Bio takes uh, a lot, most of the classes are done outside of the classroom because the students go, and you can imagine how much there is to see Rome, so we go from ancient Rome to present Rome. We, and that's the class, the classwork. And I think we have a clip of the Roman Forum. L'Arco de Costantino. religious area of the ancient city. Yeah. Under this building over here, which is called the Museo Capitolino, are the foundations of the first really great temple of Rome. If you peek in the courtyard, you might be able to see the, the great Acrolithic, that is a marble statue of the Emperor Constantine. What you saw there wasn't Douglas Beer, was Joseph Carter was just a guest that year, but normally Douglas Beer, who has been a study to be able to offer a good art history class. So he was able to incorporate literature with the other component. It's a very important class. We, we teach the student how to read the monument, how to be able to walk on their own in a city like Rome, but eventually go to Florence. Milano, Genoa, Bologna, and be able to recognize the uh, architectural style in the period. Okay. So we have a very similar um, 
organization in the Leon program, we also have two groups of students. We have a group of students at the third semester level and a group of students at the fifth semester level. And usually there are a few more students in the younger group than in the older group. So third semester and fifth semester, uh, they all take, uh, you have your brochure that, that, that will give you a little bit more information, but um, they all take one language class. So either 312K or 320, and then everyone takes a similar class, it's an SC 345, so it's a French civilization, it's, uh, it counts as an upper division culture class, but it does not count for the major. So within that class, it's called Perspectives of uh, Contemporary France, so we talk about a lot of contemporary issues, we study um, health care in France, we study the educational system in France, all of these things that would be very difficult for them to to talk about and discuss at a high enough level if it weren't in English. And we also incorporate all of our um, field trips, all of our visits in, into that class also. And um, so we don't have a YouTube site, but we, um, in the French department, we, as in the German department, we have piggybacked our first year curriculum onto our study abroad. We use the study abroad program to do, do a lot of videos and we've created the whole first year program. So in a sense, we have, uh, we have a year-long inf infomercial where uh, we publicize our study abroad program to the younger, uh, younger group of students. So I'd like to just, um, again, the two language classes, it's always team taught. Tom uh, Bessley has been a prof who's gone on it last year. He'll be going on it with me this year again. And we have a, a grad student who goes. But Dina Schertzer, Carl Blythe, Nancy Guido, um, Francois Lagarde, we, we, we rotate and sometimes we, we change the, the composition of that perspectives in contemporary France according to, to the expertise of the faculty going on. Tom and I have, uh, we've team taught and so we, we also have a French counterpart part at the University of Lyon. This is a kind of a hybrid um, exchange for every three students who go on our summer program, one student, as I understand it, comes back and can go to the UT for, the, uh, for every three. So we do work with, uh, with Lyon 3, the University of Lyon 3, uh, two, on this exchange program. So I'm going to show you, uh, because of that, uh, here I'm going to show you what we show our students on the very first day of class. The first day of five or six. So, Francais Interactif, we are in Paris. So, our students from the University of Texas. And there, of course, is the iconic Eiffel Tower. And we won't play the whole thing, but just to give you an idea, we have our stars. Welcome to Francais Interactif, the beginning French course at the University of Texas. And what better way to learn French than to visit France? Je m'appelle Blake, je suis de San Antonio. Bonjour, je m'appelle Braxton, je suis de l'Empassas. Okay, so you get the idea right from the beginning that these are our stars. So we we do have native native speakers. We've uh, got interviews with all of them, but I'm going to slip switch to now to chapter 11. We use our students to introduce the vocabulary and the theme. So here in chapter 11, we're studying um, les études, education. And so there are, are uh, views of Lyon 3, the university where we study. So here's the courtyard. It was an old tobacco factory. Um, they used to manufacture les Gaulois, you know. Uh, mm -hmm. But after World War II, <laughs> oh yeah, killed a lot of Frenchmen. Um, so, so here you have our students in in a typical classroom. Les études, you will be learning about l'éducation. 
d'éducation secondaire et supérieure, which means secondary and higher education. In this chapter, you will be learning words to help you describe your life as a student, both in high school and in college. For example, you'll be learning words for subjects such as biology or biology. Okay, so you mm -hmm. see, our students become virtual tour guides, and our first year students experience the study abroad program through. And, and we do have, here's all the list of vocabulary and interviews, like links into the grammar, etc. So now we'll go back to um, this. And if you have any questions at any time, just you know, feel free to, to, to let so, us know. Um, I'm curious, is this something that's shown in class, or are these out, out of class assignments? For these are out of class assignments. Yeah, there is a textbook, a video, so you do not spend uh, time. Except, you know, we do have some difficult ones, but no, they're, they're, they're almost entirely homework. But that means that increases the seat time, you know, because there, for every video, there is an exercise. So they have, there are, there are tasks to do. So you, so you review it the next day. Review it, or take it in as homework, or give a quiz, or um, yeah, yeah. No, but but that that is is one of the we don't spend class time. Class time is for interaction. So. But it, it does it, it incorporates it integrates the culture with the language in a way that we've never been able to do before. So we'll go back to Rome. Yeah, we've talked about uh, what I think is a unique characteristic of both of these programs and kind of differentiate them from the affiliate or exchange programs, and that is the students live with families. Uh, I think that's a very, very important um, thing, of course, because by living with a family, that means that the, the in-depth experience is incredible, not just the language. Of course, the family are not allowed, or well, many of them do not speak English, but even if they do, they are not allowed to use it. Uh, if they're desperate, maybe a few words, but the general rule is not. And, uh, and, and, but also the culture. You know, I mean, they learn right away certain things that would be impossible to teach them in class, obviously why we move so much the I mean, there is a history for everything, there is a reason. But one thing is to sit in a movie, one thing is to actually live it in it and be part of it. You need to communicate, so you need to kind of, you know, adapt in uh, their, their use. And the one thing that we say since the very first meeting at UT is that it's not an hotel. Uh, that would be a great insult if the family thinks that you are using them as an hotel, meaning you come, you eat, and you leave. No, it's family. You talk. Uh, they provide meals, breakfast and, and dinner, uh, sack lunch sometimes, it depends on the economy. Uh, but uh, during the weekend, yeah, but during the week usually it's breakfast and dinner. But you know, the Italian dinner. I mean, the, that time is the time to really discuss what you have done during the day, what you're going to be doing, what do you think about politics, because that's our daily topic, it's politics, ours, others. So, so family, it's, it's a very, very important thing for this. I have an agency in Rome uh, who has been screening and providing families since the very beginning, 1996. That means that many of the family are the same. In fact, usually we get together, we are all together at the airport. There is a private bus that takes us downtown Rome to meet the families. And normally when I come, when I jump out of the bus, a little bit tired, I have all these women hugging me and kissing me and my students said, wow, all your relatives and no, I don't maybe remember the name, but they're all there because they are the same. So they remember me very well. And that is a very frightening moment for the students because we go, they go straight to the, uh, to, to the family. Uh, it's different from, from Lyon. Uh, we meet there at the airport. They have written a letter to the family and the family has responded. If they use email, they've been in, in touch via email prior to departure. But the very, you know, the moment of truth is that moment after a long trip, right there. In fact, some of them had me extremely tired, you know, because they're a little concerned. And they go, you know, they go each go to, 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 the, to each family. So I think we have here a video of one of them, Ozzy. La famiglia Balletta dove... Grazie. Uh, 
a very um, affectionate, that's why I really like brought in. I guess it's a different culture, but um, they're very nice and they're very interested in what I've done and what I want to do. And they're helping me out with my language a lot. And, like, they're very patient and they're very, um, or what's the word? Well, they correct me, which is very important because that's what I really wanted to do while I was here. Not only absorb the culture, but kind of, you know, learn how to speak the language better.
So what what do your um, what do your families think of Sarkozy? What do your families think of this and that? And our families get very upset if, they, if we don't send home questions because that provides them a, something to talk about at the uh, dinner table, and it also makes our discussion so much more interesting in class the next day because everyone has their story to tell. In fact, in one of our first uh, assignment for the conference course, the, the other division in Italian is an interview. They have to interview oh, sure. the families, but also whoever they can find on the street. Right. So now we're going okay. to talk, we'll about talk about the visit and discussions. Um, the, the Italia, the ITC 349, as I said, is the class that takes the student everywhere in Rome. But we also uh, want to, the student to experience some Italian guys beside our professor. Not is it, it, great, but you know, they have a different style, a different approach. So often we hire professional guys, which normally are professor of art history there in Rome. And uh, for example, the one that I'm going to show you now is the, a visit to the Badiga Museum. And this is Professoressa Maria Cristina Paoluzzi, which is nice because she, has, she does have a different approach from, from ours. So it's good for them to see the differences in style of teaching and analyzing art. compared to the Vatican, and they are much better organized. So a group, they don't allow group larger than 15. So at that point, we need to hire two guides, and what we do, we divided the group, and one of the guides speaks Italian, and the other one speaks English. So at that point, they, they can, you know, they might already go with the one who speaks, but not really, actually. It's almost, you know, half and half. Sometimes I have lower division student they prefer to go with, with, with the one speaking in Italian. So it's kind of nice because at the end almost of the program, the student can even experience such a level of sophistication in the language, and it gives them a lot, a lot of you know, pride, of course. The other one that I'm going to show you is Tivoli. This is to me is very, very important because after the first week, which I call the week from hell, because for poor babies, you know, in Rome, they get a lot, I mean, they have to take buses, from the house to come downtown. So they get home, you know, they get arrived in class late. They are, oh my God, you know, there is the first week is very intimidating in a big city, you know, if they are used to Austin. So that, what I'll tell them, this is the week for me, it's fine, everything can happen, so don't worry, everything after that is gonna be total paradise, so trust me. So they, and usually it's never from hell for real, because once they know, they know it's never gonna be that bad, because I give them the worst scenario. But anyway, after the first week, we all together go to this little town outside of Rome, Tivoli, which is very calm, no cars, everything is peaceful, and they, this, uh, in Tivoli there are two villas, very important, Adrian's Villa, the Emperor, and Villa d'Este. 
So they see Adrian, of course, because it's perfectly in their, you know, the structure of the course. We're still talking ancient Rome. But then they see what can be done in the 1700 with gardens. Villa d'Este is just uh, water, fountains, so all kind of. And that's for them. They love it, usually, the place. Um, and this is a good time for bonding among themselves, but also to talk to me. I go around and I'll say, I'm here, you just come and tell me about everything you want to, me to know. Meaning even negative, the family, if something's wrong, something that is not too clear, just come to me. And it's very private, but it's not office hour, you know what I mean? We just walk. So I think, to me, I never change this field trip. So let's say just uh, probably we get
but we'll go back to three, and I'll just show you our two. Uh, we have three major um, visits which are part of the program. We go to a, uh, a vignoble in, in Beaujolais, in a medieval village. We talk about medieval life. We also go to the Alps and to Provence. So here, the, here are the students in the Alps. We go to Annecy and Chamonix, and I just uh, again, all of this is part of the culture class, so we're talking about a, a lot of different uh, things here with Chamonix and the uh, uh, La Mer de Glace, the, the glaciers which are disappearing. Um, then we go to all the way to Provence again, we visit Roman ruins in Arles. Arles is also where um, Van Gogh lives, so we retrace his steps and our guide talks to us. And, and that one is usually in English. But often we have two guides because we're, there are 30 of us, and so we do invite, uh, we do divide the students between French and English. But we try to re uh, to prepare them for these excursions uh, and give them all the vocabulary that they need will need to be in, in order to understand. Um, and we also have some beach time <laughs> in the south of France because we don't go to the, the Côte d'Azur; we go to the Camargue. So it's a it's a gypsy. Uh -huh. So that is a little bit. Um, one thing I wanted to also show you is how uh, all of the food. Food is so important. Lyon is the gastronomical capital of, of France. So here we have all of our students. Um, and again, they're t telling us we use it, them as models. <laughs> but here they're telling us what they're eating uh, a Lyonnaise salad. So, and we have a lot of videos of them. Here's the Beaujolais um, cab, so a person describing the wine. We have the students eating fondue, they have their impressions of French food, um, all sorts of, of specialties. So we, we do cover a lot of, uh, a lot of material in, on those excursions, um, vocabulary as well as culture. They, see, they, see. They, yeah. they can see, they can see probably on the, on the handout, you know, if you want to see more about the Dion and the Rome program, the, the Facebook for Rome and you have the, we have the Central, wikis, yeah. and, and we also did, uh, in 2008, I experimented with blogs, so the students uh, documented their language progress, so asking them several questions, and that blog addresses on, on your um, handout, too. All of their cultural misunderstandings, etc. <laughs> so, um, now let's see if we can go back. We need to come back here now. <laughs> we need to come back here. And we were going to to go through very quickly, what do we do? So you can see this is this is how we have organized our travel. Uh, our and study you, have the, you have there, so right. So you have it. Um, you can see what we're, we're on. now in February, March. I've just finished uh, the all of the the agreement with our study abroad um, excursions, and then we'll be wire transferring that money because these things are in-house organizations. We're able to keep the cost down. And since I'm Italian, I still have to do that. Yeah. <laughs> any any questions on on what we? Because the, the, the last point also is very yes, it's very crucial. Indeed. We don't have much time, but that question should be really right. Be well, in, indeed, if I could, is is using the uh, uh, lack of authority of my post to throw it to the two of you to say to get that discussion we started here would be so how, having run these programs for the number of years you have, to be on to Rome, uh, and seeing how we're looking at finding ways to make the language learning experience at UT even more intensive, yeah, and yes, with fewer resources. To me, from my perspective in Russia, the foreign uh, sort of abroad experience is becoming more and more crucial, critical than ever before now that if we can get students enough tools to get them broad, we need to do it as soon as possible. How do you see the role of your two programs playing into your current curricula, that you have the new, the new revised curricula in French and Italian, 
uh, what role are they playing? Well, we, we really don't know right now because our we offer a 312K class there along with the upper division. If we are facing with the sick, well, well it's not, if we are, uh, the, the if it's gone, then uh, we will have to offer a, a 612 in the summer. So you're talking about a, an already intensive class during the summer abroad. So that has been you know, a, a, a big issue for us. What are we going to do? Do we feel like doing that? Uh, which is very important to yes. nourish the, the, the young, the younger, but at the same time you want to satisfy whoever has already decided to be major or minor. So that, that is a big issue for us. We right. don't have an answer yet. We don't, and, and the, one, of the, um, one of the good things about these programs is that we nurture our minors. I mean, we create Mine. minors sure. out of the students who go on as, at the 312K level at the second year because they come back and they see they've got the enthusiasm they want to keep on taking another class, another class. So we don't want to make these programs into upper division because then we lose out on the, the students getting them into French and Italian at that early age. At the risk of oversimplification, the, the kind of model that you were giving us of a, a, a choice for students on excursions to go to the, uh, uh, kind of the Italian version or the English version, can you do a two-track version? Can you envision a two-track version where there would be one set of very intensive courses equivalent to a year for majors or for students who are in really interested in doing French okay. or Italian as opposed to one that uh, gives an elective elective credit in French or Italian language and culture mm -hmm. to do a two track, same program, but to do same program, same program but you would do two tracks for them with different. Except we don't have that in the curriculum right now, right. those two tracks. And that would be something that you might work on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're thinking of it. We're thinking about this to, absolutely. Yeah, this is one of Orlando Kelm's ideas uh -huh. of Spanish for non majors. Right. The problem uh, is though that then they want to be minors. Right. Right. And that's that's fine. That's fine. Um, as long as we stay in lower division, as long as we're giving credit for lower division courses, we can still, we do, can that. still do that. Right. right. Does that mean you'd have a track for non majors that would still be more like the five oh six, five oh seven, three twelve K, three twelve L and then a track that was more intensive? For the majors, or it's different courses at the same weight of. I think they would need to have to. They would have to have now because of how we, we restructured our right. curricula to, to have the same weight. Right. But they would have different content right. and different focuses. Okay. Um, uh, but it would be a lower division track. To my, it would be, be lower division yeah. track. And to my, in my view, the way I've been thinking about this now, that a student, for example, who would take such a course as well, I'm just doing it as an elective. I'm interested in French or Italian culture. You know, sort of generally, I really am a biology major who has this interest. Yeah. But then suddenly says, "Wow, that was tremendous! I want to apply that now to a minor in French. That we can still do that. That that course would still count toward a minor in language, right? But would that be uh, still in the lower, lower division? Still in lower division. So it still be lower six, division. Course. It would be a six twelve. The equivalent of the old the old the old six twelve. 12. The old so six twelve. So it would be a six twelve light and a six twelve. Uh, major. Yeah. Major. Major. <laughs> major. There'd be a major and a minor 612, yeah. yeah. Right. Right. So, but this one, I'm sorry, Tom, this is uh, for the second, uh, the second year, second right? Second year. Second now, year. the first year, we are gonna, it, it, it's going to be the same for everyone, I, because I we don't know. I actually have seeing it differently, to be honest. I've, we, we have a course in Russia now that was designed for non-majors, and to be honest, with the exception of, of some language instruction, there's very little difference between right. light and, uh, you know, Coke regular and Coke light. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They really do look and feel a lot the same. And also so because a major, you know, a major could come could, out could of the, 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 the first no, year, so it's no. important to... No, well, and, 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 as you've heard me say, I've mean, talked at these meetings, you know, I, I'm trying to make a, what's the Texanism here, a uh, silk purse out of the sow's ear. Um, you know, we've been dealt this very bad budget that we now yeah. need to reconcile with our courses. And I hope, I mean, I'm still hopeful that by offering very intensive first year courses, we might actually attract some people to major in our languages who wouldn't have thought about it before when they realize how much language they can get in a short period of time. If we really can do a first year, second year sequence in one year, the equivalent of a first year, second year sequence in one intensive year, then they finish saying, 
I'm just a sophomore and I can yeah. you know, take upper division. This would be great. I think I'm going to take, take some more French, mm -hmm. you know, take some more Russian. And we, yeah. we don't, we're not at that point yet right, right. because and we have a sad. five, five, six. Right. But do you see us going to six, uh, six? I mean, the, the, the budget I'm looking at to me gives us very little lead room, leeway uh, for moving in a direction that isn't toward more intensive instruction. Now, for some departments that might be five, five, six. That might be um, six, six, three. You know, it might, it, I think we different are. languages will look at it very yeah. differently. Right? Yeah. We're not a one size fits all, unfortunately, or fortunately, fortunately, we're not. Yeah. But I do think we need to move in that direction of more intensive instruction, which also means, by the way, in my opinion, and I've talked too much. I want to hear some questions, but uh, more impetus on the students, more to on their to side, have to work to work outside of class on their own, using the internet, using outside sources that we have available at UT. Use this material. Use study abroad. We don't yeah. take it for granted that this is just a summer vacation. This no, is part. Know. This is part of your Absolutely. curriculum. Yeah. Right. Right. Um, and so, yeah, that brings up a whole, you know, different way of looking at what we do in foreign language classes. That we're, we're really saying, yeah, we're going to work you really hard in class, but then, guys, it gets work even, you know, as hard outside of class. When you're on Facebook, guess what? It's going to be Facebook France or Facebook Italy. Mm -hmm. It's not going to just be as simple as spending you know, eight hours or 12 hours outside of class uh, talking to your friends, but really doing things for this course. Mm -hmm. And that's the only way we can come up with the equivalent of the hours that we've been spending with them. And, yeah, and now I will shut up. And please, comments, questions from our, our, our yes, please. I'd just like to know if uh, studying abroad is required for Italian or French major. It's, optional. it's not. It's still optional. We strongly suggest and we help as much as we can with scholarships because fortunately the College of Liberal Arts has been extremely generous in giving us a scholarship. Uh, and of course we we always and we have some scholarship within the department for only for major of Italian, whereas the Cola scholarship are for whoever is going either to Lyon to Rome. To write everywhere, you know, yeah, yeah. Germany, they're, yeah. they're forever. Yeah. So we we strong is not a mandatory order. No, it's because you know you some student may not really have the means to do it because unfortunately, as much as we work on them, it's it's a big expense to do it. You know, when you teach tuition, it, it's it's high right now. Uh, you you stay with the family in Rome, it, it's not cheap. So uh, you can impose on someone unless you can provide. A full scholarship, which unfortunately we are not today. Yeah. I wish, I would love that, but no, it should be really. We're getting mandatory. very close to it with a new major. You may know about this major that uh, we created in 2007 called GS Global Studies. That's the first major at UT where, in the, the manifest, the admission statement for the major, it includes mandatory study abroad. We're, and we're still not there yet because there's not enough money for it. Obviously, so the budget. So, language? Anyway. Which language? These would be, this would be any, the language the student chooses to concentrate in. So global studies allow students from all different languages, Chinese, uh, Russian, French, Italian, German, you know, all, all languages. But then they must, as part of that degree, study a minimum of a semester abroad. And we don't have the funding in place for that yet. We, we, we still can't make it mandatory. And European studies, don't they? European studies is now moving again in that direction to yeah. require that. Yeah. Yes. International relations degree. Right, the, right. The GS degree, that's the GS degree, yeah. We, we try not to call it IR. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone has IR, you know. <laughs> so we call it GS. So in your <laughs> estimation, how, what's the percentage of major who actually study abroad? Very high. For us, uh, for us very high. Yeah, Most of our major have... have even though it's not required. Even though it's not required, required. yes. It's true for yes. Russian as well. Yes. Yes. That's related yes. to my question also. I was curious, since you've been using the videos, um, how uh, have you seen an increase in the number of students that are going abroad? Do did, uh, did they work as a marketing technique as well? The, 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 the video? Uh -huh. uh, well, to be honest, this is a... Um, I never had a problem with numbers. This year has been particular the economy, but I think also, you know, all the budget cuts of last semester put all of us in a very uh, different mood, let's put it that way. Yeah. <laughs> Therefore, the energy and the enthusiasm was really much lower than normal. So I, what I, 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 I really would like to, you know, learn more from Karen because I never incorporate the, I love the video, I just love it because it's been done by a professional 
a student of mine, but she's a, a director, and she incorporated, you know, the, the, the clips from real movies, and Rome being with Cine Città, that re movies, it's a big reality for Rome. So it makes a lot of sense, this video, if you know Rome, you know, it's perfect. Uh, the, the thing she chose very carefully. So what I do, I'll, but I haven't really used much, I need to use it more, because usually I show this video, which is a 20 minutes video, yeah at the orientation session when the parents also are invited to join us. So they can have an idea. But to be honest with you, I think I will work a little bit more on that to use it as a tool because I really don't as much as I could. Yeah, well, and we do, we always have to turn away students. Even for the young, for the young uh -huh. even this year. Usually in a, on a good year, we have 50 to 60 students who apply and we can only take 30. Um, this year we, we were, we were really thinking that we were going to have a hard time, but we still ended up with 48 applications. Wow. So we can't wow. take everything. We, we, should, we don't we have that, that, of course, we have because we have about 600 students at the most in the Italian department. So, you know, if we'll take, usually I've been taking between 32 and 36. Uh, this is the lowest year. This year I have only 28. This is that's the law. That's a nationwide trend, yeah. yeah. Study abroad programs across the yeah. country are, are really yeah. down this, this year. It's the economy. The economy. Yeah. Yeah. We're, we're taking it's 30. Uh, and we had three drop down because of money. 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 Yeah, money. Yeah. No, no because question. they all that's want the to come. That's the number one reason ours drop out. Right. Yeah. Very few say, I don't want to come because I'm too shy to live with a family right. that is not my family. So family. those videos would make that really easy yeah. to, to exactly. show them, look, yes. it's not that bad. Yeah. Yeah, right. And now that we, yeah. have, we have a very nice web page, the program has, so I invite the instructor to, to, to show some of the clips, because they're very short, they're like a minute and a half the most, to show it in, in, to the student in class. I have a class. I do too. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I know, I know. I know. Uh, I, I hope, again, please take advantage of the fact that on our TLC website there is a blog link, which is a TLC blog. That blog site, uh, our, our tech wizard, Kyle, will have the videotape from this today's lecture uploaded so that any your colleagues, your friends, your family, your pets can watch this <laughs> wonderful presentation at home, especially pets. But it also then allows you to ask questions, comment after the fact. Mm -hmm. And I will ask our, our illustrious lecturers then to take a look at the blog every now and then and see if your comments are up there, they'll respond to them. And we will respond to them from the center as well. Excellent. So we hope that way you can keep the discussion going for on and on and on. Thank you, thank you all thank so you. much. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you.